Hi everybody, it's Kit from the Tualatin Public Library and I am ready for my big role. I am going to be in a movie. Okay, wasn't exactly the kind of movie I was thinking about, but I guess an animated film will work. Hmm, what can we do? Oh, I know, we can make homemade animations using zoetropes. Let's do that. To give you an example of how zoetrope works, here is one I made with hearts. You might have seen these before, the most famous one being of a horse galloping. To begin our zoetropes, we need a dark piece of paper, 17 and an eighth inch long by two and a half inches high. We're going to have one inches between each of the notches, and the notches are going to be an eighth of an inch by one inch deep, all the way down the paper. You can experiment with the width of these. It will give different illusions different times. But this one was the easiest and the most clear when I did my experimentation. When cutting your notches, try to make them as even as possible. The illusion will still work if it is not even, but not as well. And the reason why is this relies on the persistence of vision that is common in the human brain, particularly for animals that blink. It kind of fills in the gaps between the blinks so that we aren't as conscious of them. And if we have them the most even, then it is what the brain is used to doing in terms of blinking. Now, when you get to the end, make sure to look at the spacing and see if it looks pretty good. If it does, we're ready for our next step, which is we are going to tape it into a circle. Now you can use scotch tape. I just happen to have packing tape. That was what was easy at hand, but any tape will do just as long as you can get it into a circle. And we roll it up and get it on the tape. Unfortunately, my packing tape is a little wide, so I had to cut it so that it's not covering up one of the uh, links there um, because the shiny might actually interfere with the illusion. I don't know if it would, but it makes me feel better not just to not have that as part of it. And so pull that off and then we have our circle. And on to the next step. Once our circle is made, then we're going to grab our platform for me, that was a nine inch birthday plate, uh, paper plate that we didn't use at our last birthday. You use a pie tin or whatever is circular. And then we're going to tape that down just to give it a little more stability. Um, depending on how stable you like it, you can do it in four sections. I would do the first section and first piece of tape, then write directly across from it put a different piece of tape um, and then do the cross sections the other way. In this case, I felt like mine was a little more stable. So I just did tape right across from each other. I kind of checked it after I have uh, got the tape down here and it looks pretty good to me. Um, and so that is our base. So next we're going to do our animation. I admit I am not the best freehand artist, so I decided to go with stick figures. And I tried to get them roughly evenly spaced apart. It works better that way. But as you can see, I just used two fingers as my measuring. Um, so it doesn't have to be super exact. And I did a pattern where the arms were waving up and down. Try to make your pattern circular so that it goes back on itself. Otherwise, it looks a little strange. I added my flags and I decided to add a little color just to make it a little bit better. Um, so I have little red, orange, and yellow flags. And then when I was done, we were ready to also make this into a circle. So I will be taping this too, but I'm going to wait and see how it fits inside of the other circle first. Um, even though paper is very thin, 
because of the imperfections of the circle that are inevitable, you'll probably not use quite the same length of the 17 inch paper that you did on the outside. So I fit it in there and then just kind of slid it out um, to tape it. The advantage of this too is that if you do it this way and get it taped up, then you can put it in without taping it into the inside. And this means that you could use the base for several different animations. Use it over and over and over again. All right, so we fit it down inside of there. And there you go. All right, once you have your circles made, now we want to be able to spin this in some way. So we're going to try and find the middle there. Um, you can do this much more exactly with the ruler. I kind of just eyeballed it and kind of made the cross there and then found the little, oh, made a mark. And then we are going to grab a thumbtack and push it through. And then on the other end, we're going to grab a pencil with an eraser. And we're just going to kind of jam that in there. That will be your base um, that you hold to spin. Um, you might have to support it a little bit with your fingers uh, when you spin it. Make sure you don't get the thumbtack too into uh, or too tight because um, then it won't have the ability to spin. Um, and you can see it can be a little floppy. That's why you have to put your fingers a little bit underneath it. But there you go. You should be able to use it this way. So that's it. Zotropes are super easy to make, and you can make all kinds of animations with them. So I'm going to go on half fun doing some of my own. But first, a little revenge. <laughs>